No one's here to say a word. No one cares. Greetings, fellow shut in. I am Louise Palanker, and this is Quarantainment, episode three. Are you spending a lot of time online gazing at imagery that harkens back to a gentler time when we walked amongst each other? Same. But we can isolate together, shelter in place, SIP, sip, something soothing. We've all been under a lot of stress. Did you know that stress can cause shingles? I recently learned exactly that. It's on my face. I'm a survivor of childhood acne. Not amused. But it does explain my absence. This is where the shingles set up their home office. These are the satellite operations. Bastards do not do business with them. We are living through dark and strange times. Yes, boomers are learning Zoom. My mother is learning to text. She asked me to text her the name of the book I'm reading. I did so and she responded with a watermelon emoji. We're very close. At the end of this episode, I will reveal to you what book inspired a watermelon emoji? Starbucks is down to drive through only. You just sit there in your car, behind another car, like a long line of bubble boys. Or, if you are wise and crafty, you can mix a packet of Swiss Miss with two scoops of Folgers crystals, add hot water, presto, like a miracle, it's a mocha. It's a 47 cent mocha. Do you sit at home and think, I wonder where Robert Redford is right now? He's home. I wonder where Barry Gibb is. He's home. I wonder where Carol King is. She's home. The Pope? Home. Lady Gaga? Home. Prince William? Home. Cher? Home. The answer is as short as her name. On our last episode, my brother Craig called in with issues regarding the Harriet Tubman movie. He found it to be highly fictionalized He's read a biography on Harriet Tubman called Harriet Tubman, colon, Conductor on the Underground Railroad by Anne Petrie. Craig says that her life was dramatic enough they did not need to fabricate or fictionalize. When Joe's president, that fine woman is going on our 20. Today we are celebrating strong women like me. When I'm not scrambling for my thermometer while screaming when I wake up in the middle of the night with a hot flash. First, I beyond highly recommend the Netflix series Anne with an E. The E is for extraordinary. It takes place in the early 1900s on Prince Edward Island, which if you check your maps is in Canada, off the coast of Nova Scotia or New Brunswick or some other maritime province with a St. John. This version of the tale features Amy Beth McNulty as a brilliantly spirited Anne who delights in all she imagines and surveys. The series delves into themes that are more relevant now than ever. Issues like women's roles in a changing world, LGBTQ and civil rights, Native American rights, and of course, self-discovery, independence, and ownership. Anne with an E on Netflix is an essential quarantine companion. Next, I'm going to highly recommend to you Hillary on Hulu from director Nanette Burstein. She takes a good hard look at why people find Hillary to be so polarizing. Is it because she's a Clinton? Is it because she's a woman? Is it both? Are we really ready to elect a female president? Let me float a thought that remains unspoken in the film, but as a woman who has first succeeded in a male-dominated business, radio, and then attempted the male-dominated art of stand-up comedy, I know that there is an undercurrent to the mere concept of any given woman's existence. If you're a straight male, you look at any woman through the lens of, do I imagine myself in bed with her? And if you're a straight female, do I imagine my guy imagining himself in bed with her? We don't talk about it much, but it's there, and it's in the way of respecting any woman for her own given accomplishments and capabilities. As a guy, you could say, well, how about you ladies? Doesn't the same apply when you assess men? The answer is yes, for about a minute. Then we move on to his stance on sensible gun laws, his climate change initiatives, and his 40 years of wisdom, compassion, and public service vote for Joe. My point is that Hillary on Hulu is thought-provoking, and we all finally have some time to think, so watch it. You may also want to read What Happened by Hillary Clinton. It's her take on all that went on during the campaign, and it's a pretty good read. I then found a really neat documentary by Pamela B. Green called Be Natural about French silent film director Alice Guy Blachet, and it's narrated by Jodie Foster. 
Elise began her film career at the very dawn of the industry in 1894, back when the craft was considered fringe and artsy, suitable for a woman's talents. By 1896, she was directing films and had moved to New Jersey, where she founded the movie studio Solax. By 1919, men were understanding the power and the prestige and the money that all went with the film industry, and Elise was marginalized and written out of film history. Back in the early days, there were no credits. Her name was not on the films. The over 1,000 films that she made were forgotten, and credit for her cinematic innovations and techniques, and even some of her more famous works, was given to men. In this documentary, the filmmaker takes you with her on a hunt for films and interview footage and for the truth, and in watching, you become a participant in the rewriting of Elise Guy Blachet's history. Okay, here we are. The book title that I texted to my mom is... The Giver of Stars by Joe jo Moyes. And I will tell you more about that the next time we meet. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, stay kind, and go wash your hands. No one's here.